This is Somerville, Massachusetts. People used to say you're from Slummerville, and I grew up with that name. And that reputation goes back to, I'd say, starting mid-century when we abandoned the rail systems for the automobile. Uh, streetscape started to become dotted with more lighted and undesirable uses. It was known as being corrupt and being this place where nobody wanted to be and it was a little sketchy. Somerville has a, a really amazing past and bad things have happened here, but it has this wonderful, wonderful soul. If we wanted to rewrite that narrative, we had to do it on our own. What the city has done is it has changed the relationship between people who live there and the government. It really has fundamentally changed it. Instead of being a place that was kind of the armpit of New England, it has become a place where every 29-year-old is desperate to want to live there. Professor Domus and I met each other in well, November 2003. I had just been elected mayor, had not yet been sworn in. I was describing a lot of the best practices of really leading cities. At the end of the panel, I, I approached uh, Professor Domus. I said, hey, I, these are the things I've been talking about my campaign. But I'm broke. We have no money. How can I and my future administration city work with the Harvard Kennedy School? And what we saw was an opportunity where the city could be an experiential classroom for the students. Where those who have already taken the introductory or intermediate classes can actually work in the real world. Since then, we've been on a decade-long relationship that has resulted in many reforms, innovations, and an incredible amount of results for the city of Somerville. Well, everyone was incredibly welcoming when we came to City Hall as a student group. My department heads and agency managers and rank-and-file employees had an incredible experience. We can really maximize our work by teaming up with uh, these student partners. Right off the bat, we reformed the whole budget document. It wasn't as transparent, it wasn't as obvious why we're making spending decisions. It didn't say if it was aligned to any goals and objectives that we all embraced. It's now uh, an award-winning document that residents understand, the mayor understands, department heads understand. It's used as a prop on Parks and Rec. Leslie Note holding it up is like, here's our town budget. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one of our proudest moments. And over and over again, over the last 10 years, we've had similar projects on budgeting, on customer service, on specific capital projects. The biggest impact is that this school has infused us with a data-driven approach to government. We've made overhauls to how we think about traffic and parking and our customer service there. We've made decisions about how to deploy meters and uh, whether or not to build community centers. It's put in a 311 line, it's put in a performance-based budget, it's put in, it is managing using a STAT program, the summer STAT program. All based on input from students. A funny thing is that a decade ago, none of my students actually lived in Somerville. And now, because it's Somerville has become such a hip place, actually quite a few of them live in Somerville. It's really inspiring to be here and see how engaged the community is with the government and with making, just making everything better than it used to be. When we look at the United States and we look at the challenges and the scale of our problems, it's very difficult to understand how those things are going to be fixed. And the reason that Somerville is so important is because Somerville is an example of how really good management, really good analytics, and really good leadership, all the things we teach at the Kennedy School, can actually transform a city from being a basket case to being something really well run. The community has risen up and said, well, if you want to know how you create an exceptional place to live, to work, to play the raise a family, you look at some of them.